Okay. Um, can I turn the slide? You sure? Okay. Okay, echo findings. This guy had, a, first of all, he had um, plus four um, aortic regurge, and he had plus four mitral regurge. And he had a dilated aortic root, and he had a ruptured chordae, and I called, oh, okay, so I, I called the uh, cardiothoracic surgeon, I called the cardiologist, I said, you know, I have a guy here, he's got an inflammatory disease, and his heart's just kaput. Um, I need him to see you immediately, I need him to get a cath, I need his valves looked at and fixed or replaced. So sure enough, they, they take him over, they look at him, and they say, well, um, the good news is, is that uh, maybe we can help him, and the bad news is we have to replace both valves. So I said, do me a favor, when you do the valves, would you please make sure you get me a pathology report? So the pathology comes back, and it says rheumatic heart disease. And I said, gosh, this is completely worthless, just like I would expect. So then I went back and I thought about the case, and I said, well, what the hell gives a dilated aortic root that doesn't seem to be vasculitis, as per the pathology, what gives a ruptured chordae in concurrence with a dilated aortic root in the absence, we know syphilis and we know infections have been excluded. I'm sorry? Marfan syndrome. Marfan syndrome is a good thought, but I never mentioned his eyes. And I would give you some of the more pointers. But again, this is a guy with three years of fevers. Since when do they get fevers in Marfans? Now, I'm not Peter Merkel, but I'm okay. Okay, I heard something else. What? Rheumatic fever? Reasonable thought. But not, not the answer, but it's, you know, it's reasonable. But, you know, you mentioned rheumatic fever. I would hope the pathologist would have said something that might have resembled rheumatic fever. Anyway. I'm sorry? FMF? FMF. That's usually abdominal pain and people on the silk route. Not him. He, he did not have a monoclonal protein, which I'd expect an FMF. Good thought, no, nothing personal. Okay, amyloidosis for the same reason, there's no FMF, there's no monoclonal protein. One more and I'll, then I'll move on. Giant cell arteritis, um, three years of fever, yes. Um, valve disease, perhaps, but I don't know, dilated root and ruptured chordae, I suppose it's possible. Suppose it's possible, but I will ask you a question. Three years of giant cell arteritis untreated, where's the blindness and the stroke? Partially treated? Maybe he did, but why didn't he get better with the steroids? No, I'd expect him to get better on steroids and methotrexate, at least to some degree, but he didn't. But it, it's not a bad thought. What was the other thought? There was one more thought before I changed the slide. Takayasu's? Good thought, but that's a young, woman, a young Japanese woman. This is an old white guy. <laughs> but again, I respectfully think that's a decent thought. I'm doing better th at this than I thought I would. Except you're, you're not, you're running out of time. I'm running out of time. Yeah. Time's a factor, and, and it was for this guy. OK. I said I had to throw my personality in. Okay, now, uh, can I turn the slide yet? Yes, you can turn Okay. Okay, this guy, who I'm going to now refer to as a dummy, who lost me for three years, who came back with all this stuff, I talked to the pathologist about the guy's heart, and they were completely useless to me after I said, his diagnosis rests on what you find. They told me nothing other than the ruptured chordae and the dilated aortic root. Shortly after, within 10 days' time, the guy comes into my office like this. I said, does your eye hurt? Does your eye itch? Does your eye this? Does your eye that? He was basically bumbling around telling me he doesn't know. I said, get out of my office and go straight to the eye doctor, okay? Make a long story short, the eye doctor calls me up. He says, your patient has a case of necrotizing scleritis. Relapsing polychondritis. That's a damn good thought. So let me show you what happened to the guy the next day. Is it projecting? But from here, it all looks gray. 
Okay, well, suffice to say the guy has relapsing polychondritis. Okay, now that we know he's got relapsing polychondritis with a very unusual fashion, uh, presentation, and I want to just quickly, in the 18 seconds that have been allowed to me, I want to tell you two things that I've learned about relapsing polychondritis right, blah, 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 as they per pertain to this case. First of all, relapsing polychondritis, as you're all aware, has been associated with virtually every disease known to man, but never Still's disease. Okay. Second, um, relapsing polychondritis does involve the heart, reasonably common with respect to relapsing polychondritis. Back to my first statement. You either have a common or a rare disease, and it presents common or rare. Well, here we've got a guy who presented rare with the fevers look like stills, never had stills. And then here we have this guy presenting in what seemingly is a very classic polychondritis. So let's go back to the heart, which is really the crux of this case. In fact, the pathology is not that important because valves are uh, devoid of cartilage. But I will tell you a couple of things. 4% of patients with relapsing polychondritis develop aortic valve disease, almost always exclusively manifested by a dilated aortic root. 2% of patients with relapsing polychondritis will in fact have mitral valve disease exclusively defined by ruptured chordae. Mitral valve disease is never seen alone without the concurrent involvement of the aortic valve. The aortic, the aortic valve can occur alone, but not the mitral. And having simultaneous is much less than the 2% that it occurs. So it's a very rare finding. I couldn't find an exact number or percent. But suffice, it's less than 1%. So this is a case of a person who presented with, with what for all the world looked like adult onset stills disease. And I don't believe anybody of all the guessing, which I agree with all of it, you know, would have come up with this faster than I did. Um, and then everything became a mishmash. But looking back on the heart findings, this was a classic case of relapsing polychondritis. And it just so happened that the necrotizing scleritis and the ear cinched the diagnosis. I want to make one comment about the treatment before John throws me out of the building. Um, the treatment of relapsing polychondritis. Now, I'll tell you, I have about three to five patients in my practice of 20 years with relapsing polychondritis. And if anybody here trained in Philadelphia, they all, they all saw the same guy I saw, because this one guy floats around the VA. <laughs> but that being said, I will tell, tell you, it is unusual to have cardiac involvement without tracheal involvement. This guy never had tracheal involvement, never had strider, never had an abnormal chest x-ray. Next. The treatment is start with prednisone, add methotrexate, and hope that they stabilize. Now, um, there was a recent article. It was uh, actually in the last four weeks in the Blue Journal, whatever that one is, Mark Hochberg, Blue Journal. And there's an uh, analysis of uh, the use of biologic agents in um, relapsing polychondritis. Now, when I was dealing with this case, my go-to guy for relapsing polychondritis is David Trentum. I called David and I said, David, I have a guy with relapsing polychondritis who, if I can get him under control and the methotrexate at 20 or 25 milligrams does not control the guy's disease, what do I do? And he said, well, you can try Celsept, you can try this, you can try that. And I said, what about biologics? And he essentially told me what is published in this month's Blue Journal, which is that there's about 20 or 30 anecdotes about each biologic. And I'll summarize it in one sentence. 50 people with relapsing polychondritis were given Remicade. 50% of them improved, specifically with regard to their necrotizing scleritis. Nothing more can really be said. Enbrel, Umera, Abetacept, uh, take your pick. They were all anecdoted somewhere between four and 10 cases. There was nothing outstanding about it. And Remicade was 50% effective for the necrotizing scleritis but not the other things. So I think our mainstay of treatment for relapsing polychondritis is methotrexate. I think this has not changed in a long time. And I think had this dummy taken the methotrexate from day one, perhaps with the Kinneret, I don't think he would have rotted out his heart valves. And that's my story.